as I mentioned the other day about pet peeves, I'm going to share a story with you I wrote a few years ago, and it's still quite appropriate. Uh, the title of the story is called Bugbears by Walter Parks. A noun, informal, something in which one frequently complains of particular personal vexation, particular personal complaint, somebody's constant topic of complaint. Function, a noun, a frequent subject of complaint, a particular and often continual annoyance, personal bugbear, something about which one frequently complains, something that annoys one so much that he is moved to gripe about it. Now we know what a pet peeve is. Today was one of those days that didn't quite go as well as one might hope. I ran into several pet peeves that haven't showed themselves lately, and I got to thinking about just how many annoyances there are that could be considered pet peeves to different people. Well, there's no limit to the things that could be pet peeves. Lots of things annoy people in our daily lives. While those annoyances are bothersome, most don't fit into my definition of a pet peeve. Like anyone else, I may occasionally gripe or complain about high prices or the hot weather or many other annoyances, but they aren't pet peeves. My pet peeves are usually some little thing that just gripes me so bad that it becomes a pet peeve, and it's usually something most others don't even seem to notice. I would imagine people who make lists of pet peeves may be someone's pet peeve. So, as I list some of mine, I will try to understand why it annoys me so much. In correlating my pet peeves, I have connected them with other words and terms that either relate to them or the origin of them, terms like bugbear and problem and boogie bear. In looking at the definition, I see one definition says a particular and often continual annoyance, a personal bugbear. Well, I couldn't let that slide, so I had to look up bugbear since I've never heard of the word. Wouldn't you know it? I found out I don't just have pet peas. Heck no, I got bugbears. So now before I discuss my pet peeves, I will pause and add yet another list of definitions to this story. I may yet find the cause of my pet peeves and trace them all the way back to my childhood when someone said the booger man was going to get you. So here's a list of definitions of bugbear. My goodness, with the help of this dictionary I found, I could enter a whole new world. I could be a psychologist. Warning, pet peeves and bugbears might be catching. As I list a few of my bugbears, some may be new to you and you may catch it. If Ralph Waldo Emerson was right, then I'm a person with a little mind. So far in this story, I'm coming out pretty messed up. Heck, I got pet peeves and bugbears and now a little mind. That being said, let us break it down. We will start at the grocery store. Going to the grocery store exposes me to several of my bugbears. But remember, bugbears happen in a lot of places. I'm just using the grocery store as one example. It begins when I walk in the door. I very rarely get a buggy that's worth a flip. The person in front of me will always get one that rolls freely and appears to have no problems. Not me, because I always get one that wants to roll left or right due to a poor wheel alignment or one of the wheels is flat and won't roll at all or some dang string is wrapped around the front wheel and I get one you just about get a hernia trying to push it around it has become a major bugbear with me guess that's where the saying originated when they say someone has a bug up his arse one of the definitions of the word problem is a source of perplexity, distress, and vexation. So next time somebody asks you, do you have a problem? You will know he is really asking, do you have a bug somewhere in your anatomy? Heck, I always assumed it meant real bugs and now booger bears. 
It's got to the point that I will stand there five minutes checking buggies until one seems suitable enough to roll around. What the heck? Why shouldn't I strain myself trying to roll one that's obviously been ran over by at least three automobiles in the parking lot and a pickup truck and kicked by a mule? There have been times when some store manager looked at me flinging buggies left and right looking for the right one when I thought they would say something to me. Little did he know I'm just waiting to give him a 20-minute lecture about proper buggy maintenance. Let us make that one first on my bugbear's pet peeve list. Item 1. Poor buggy maintenance. Major pet peeve with me. There I am walking down the first row of the store and the buggy I chose made it about 30 feet before it starts going bump, 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 squeak, squeak, bump, bump. I should just quit expecting to ever get a good buggy. It's almost like I'm being taunted by the buggy's squeaky wheels. Ha ha, got you again, squeak, squeak, squeak. The bugbears is going to get you again. Several things bother me about the grocery store that would come under the next item on my list. Item 2, being cheated or ripped off or manipulated. I know it's mostly just to run a bad luck, but a few things almost makes me wonder if I'm jinxed at the store. I can walk up to a huge stack of 10 pound bags of potatoes and pick the only one in the pile that has a rotten one in it. On the first try, too. More than once I've gotten home before discovering it. So now I have to smell the bag before I put it in my squeaky buggy. I can pick a gallon of milk off the shelf and it would be out of date. It took me a while to learn I better check and see if the lids are on tight when I pick up a jar of mayonnaise, but those are just annoyances. One bugbear involves me being ripped off in the meat department. It's small things that irk me the most. Did you ever notice when you buy a nice steak that looks so good only to get home and find the bottom side of the meat caked with the residue of all the bone chips and fat? Where he sawed it on the saw? Well, that is not by accident. They took the time to clean off the top of the meat so it would look nice and pretty in the store. You would be more likely to purchase it. He wasn't being lazy about when he left that junk all on the bottom of the meat. You could scrape a tablespoon of bone chips off of the bottom of your steak. And you should too, unless you like eating bone meal. He left it there so the meat would weigh more, just a tad more, and thereby increasing his profit. They also add water to ground beef to add weight. Ever cook a burger and see the water come out and just steam your burger rather than fry it? Heck, if it needs water, I can add the water at home for free. They also advertise good fresh daily hamburger meat. What they aren't telling you is, it was ground fresh all right, but yesterday's leftover unsold stuff was added back into it. Did you ever notice when you break open the meat to make a burger, the inside of it looks dark in spots? That's old meat that was added to it. I can't stand being ripped off. If it's old meat, lower the price and sell it. Don't try ripping me off instead. There are lots of ways the grocery store can rip people off. Far too many to mention now. Oh, and I almost forgot being manipulated. Is it a coincidence that my favorite brand of coffee or facial tissue was out of stock? Most likely not. They have a whole shelf of another brand that isn't selling too good. And they hope you will buy that brand rather than do without. Soon his junk is about sold, he will drag out the whole pallet of my coffee and stock his shelf. Doesn't seem to matter if I'm in a grocery store or maybe else or anywhere else. If a person is trying to sway me to do what they want, I don't like it. Part of my item two pet peeve is I hate being manipulated. There I am with my buggy full of I've got my rotten bag of potatoes my gallon of sour milk, a bunch of rotten bone-caked water-soaked meat, 
several boxes of off-brand tissues that were probably disintegrating my fingers when I blow my nose. Now, wouldn't that make somebody a fine pet peeve? A crummy tissue that leaves you needing to go wash your hands. And I have some weird brand of coffee that will probably grow grown someplace in China, harvested by some very short Chinaman who couldn't reach high enough to get the right coffee beans. I've loaded my stuff in my squeaky buggy in such a way that nothing will get damaged by something heavy and I've I have a couple of half thawed out probably stale out of date pizza pies still flat on the bottom. All the goodies won't run to one side if you put them in there flat. Somewhere in there there's other things I won't discover until I get home. Like some of my eggs are cracked. The mayonnaise will have a loose lid and smell rank when opened. And Lord knows what other abnormalities I will find. So far I've encountered two serious bugbears, a squeaky buggy, several dollars worth of bone chips, and water. I'm headed for the checkout line. Squeak, squeak, bump, bump, squeak, squeak, bump, bump. I'm able to notice that at every time the wheels bump, I'm leaving a trail of sugar through the store due to a hole in the bag. I almost dread going to the checkout because there I'm certain to encounter one of my biggest ever bugbears. I think to myself how I've done pretty good keeping my cool so far. I see the shortest line and I'm almost to it when some fat lady with a thousand dollars worth of the store's defective products races ahead and jumps in line ahead of me. For a moment there I consider bumping her with my buggy, but she's so much padding back there that she probably won't even notice, or even worse, she may enjoy it. I shudder as I think to myself, heavens to Murgatroyd, and I quickly find another line. Now I've been in the store for an hour, twenty minutes of which I've been waiting in this line behind a lady with a small toddler in his seat. He wouldn't be so bad looking at a kid if Mama would at least take the time to wipe the trail of snot that's dripping from his nose. But she either can't see it or thinks it's okay to just let his nose run. In the last few minutes, the toddler has reached out, grabbed at least five different pieces of candy from the display case, and held them to his mouth. The dirty little hands that Mama probably hasn't washed in a week. Occasionally, as she reads the latest issue of some smut magazine, she would take the candy from the kid and place it back on the display for the next unsuspecting shopper to buy. But the kid gets another one. I think I will never buy a piece of candy from one of those places again. Finally, Mama is paying for her groceries. She's digging in her pocketbook for loose change while she holds a folded $20 bill in her lips so her hands will be free to dig for change. She hands the cashier the 47 cents she was looking for, then takes the folded $20 bill from her lips and hands it, still folded, to the cashier. To my amazement, she takes the money, unfolds it, shoves it in her cash drawer without even considering she him have just been exposed to typhoid or AIDS or some something other type of disease. I personally would not have touched that money, but apparently the cashier is cool with it. At this point in my story, I will go ahead and tell you my absolutely worst bugbear at the grocery store is squashed bread. I am constantly on the guard against it. Nothing irks me quite as bad as to get home and try making a sandwich with a loaf of bread that has been squashed. Have you ever tried to straighten a slice of bread that's been reduced to practically a dough ball? It can't be done. All you wind up with is a ring of bread crust with a hole in it. While Mama is paying for her groceries, I get most of mine piled on the counter so they can ring it up. Actually, nowadays, they don't ring up, they just beep it or scan it. Now it's my turn. I tell the young lady as she grabs my two loaves of bread, I want my bread put in a paper sack, please. She sets it to one side and begins to start scanning my stuff. I make a point to tell the bag boy about the need for the paper sack for my bread. Now there's two used-to-be-frozen pizzas. 
think about them for a moment. When they were made in the pizza factory, they were made laying flat. They were stored in a box that said this end up. They were chucked all the way to the store laying flat. They were displayed in the grocery store's freezer shelf laying flat. They have made it all the way to the cash register, still laying flat. What does the girl do? She tips them up on their side to scan them. They don't scan right away, so she flings them back and forth in front of her scanner and still on, on their side. We all know what's happening. All them pepperonis and little sausage balls or whatever else toppings were on it are now shook to one side of the box. In fact, most of the grated cheese is on one side too. Still, they won't scan, so, so what does she do? She deduces it must be the moisture on the box. So she uses her hand to wipe the moisture from the box. That's right. It's the same darn hand as a few minutes ago held the disease-infested, slobbered-up, germ-ridden $20 bill. She begins to race my flinging my stuff down the slide to the bag boy who is stuffing things in one in any order in, in a race to keep up with her. He's piling the bags in a buggy on top of each other. Somewhere down in that pile of defective products is a four and a half pound bag of sugar squashing my tomatoes. My pizzas are in there on their side as well. About this time I see him toss my loaf of bread in a plastic sack and throw them in too. I momentarily lose it at this point. Customers four rows away can hear me shout at the 19 year old kid. Boy, how would you like those loaves of bread shoved up your nose? I quickly regain my composure and manager shows up asking if I have a problem. Heck yes, I have a problem. You just sold me two bags of bread dough that used to be loaf bread for one dollar and eighty cents each. After making the manager get more bread, I'll roll yet another defective buggy towards my truck while I think, darn, I almost made it. I almost got by that bugbear, but I finally lost my cool. The crap we retired railroaders have to put up with. Thanks for listening, my friends.